Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we solve such equations and talk about the theory behind it. Indeed, in today's part 5, we will talk about solving strategies for autonomous equations. More precisely, we will have a first order autonomous ODE in one dimension. And in fact, it turns out that we have a general solving method for these equations. However, before we start with the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. And you might already know, as a reward for supporting me, you get PDF versions and quizzes for all the videos. Just use the link in the description to find my webpage and there you can download everything. Ok, then without further ado, let's start with the topic of today by first discussing what we mean when we talk about an initial value problem. The name already tells you, we want to find some special solutions for a differential equation that satisfy some initial condition. More concretely, it means first we have our first order differential equation given as x dot is equal to v of x, where v should be a continuous function. We already talked about that this is the general form of ODEs like we want to consider them, however, now we want to restrict that to one dimension. In other words, it's not a system, it's just one ordinary differential equation. And to make it simpler, the function v should be defined on the whole real number line and a continuous function. And now the initial value is stated that x at the position 0 is equal to a given value x0. So you see, x0 here is just a given real number. And now solving this initial value problem means that we want to find all solutions alpha and such a solution could be defined on any interval t0 to t1 but it's important that at least the point 0, the point in time 0, lies inside this interval. Now, as a reminder, solution simply means if we put the function alpha into the ODE, it solves it. In other words, alpha dot of t is equal to v of alpha of t for all t in the interval t0 to t1. However, for solving the initial value problem, we want more. We also want that alpha at the point 0 is equal to x0. This means that we fix the value of the solution at a given time point. And please note that this point is chosen as 0 is not a restriction at all, simply because we have an autonomous ODE where the time is not explicitly in it. This means 0 here is an arbitrary choice, but it's without loss of generality. Ok, and now the question is, how can we solve such an ODE with a given initial condition? And indeed, there is a general solving strategy we now can develop. However, let's first do that in the case that v at our value x0 is not 0. In other words, this value here should be strictly positive or strictly negative. We take this case because there we can simplify the ODE by dividing by v of x. Hence the ODE now looks like that, x dot divided by v of x is equal to 1. Please note, because v is a continuous function, this whole thing here makes sense in the neighborhood around x0. This means that the function v could have zeros and there would make problems here, however in some sense they are far off of x0. Therefore only around x0 we consider the ODE in this form. Therefore now we know any solution alpha here with the condition that 0 is in the domain and alpha of 0 is x0 fulfills the following. By definition we have alpha dot of s divided by v of alpha of s is equal to 1. And you already see we use s for the independent variable here because we want to use t for something else later. Therefore, to make this precise, we would say this equation holds for all s in the given interval. And now you might already guess, in order to solve this equation now, we will integrate on both sides. And namely, we will simply integrate from the given point 0 to a given point t. Hence, on the right hand side, it simply means that we get out t. We integrate a constant from 0 to t, so the result would be t. 
And now please note, this holds for all possible t and you can also go backwards to the original equation. So you would say this is simply differentiating and then you get the result by the fundamental theorem of calculus. Indeed, this is a very important result that we need to solve ordinary differential equations. And if you don't know it, please check out my real analysis series where we also prove it. Moreover, in real analysis we also learn how to deal with integrals. For example, we know we can use the substitution rule to solve such an integral here. And in fact, this will be exactly our next step here. And there we should immediately see that it helps to introduce a new variable x for alpha of s. And now by knowing the substitution rule, you know informally we can write dx is equal to alpha dot of s ds. And then these two things here are exactly the two things we will substitute here inside the integral. In other words, we have the integral of 1 divided by v of x. And then, most importantly, don't forget the boundaries, now we integrate from alpha of 0 to alpha of t. However, we already know alpha of 0 is equal to our initial value x0. Therefore, let's immediately put that in. Instead of alpha of 0, we now write x0. Moreover, the right hand side is not changed at all. We still have that this integral is equal to t for all t. Okay, and with that we see, in order to solve our original ODE, we have to find antiderivatives of the function 1 divided by v. So again, we recognize that the fundamental theorem of calculus goes in here. Because from that, we can conclude that an integral can be written with antiderivatives. More precisely, we have the antiderivative at the upper limit, alpha of t, minus the antiderivative at the lower limit. And in this case, we already know this is simply x0. So there we see, we have our new equation here. And please don't forget, capital F should be an antiderivative of the function 1 divided by v. This means that this procedure here only works if we are able to find an antiderivative of the function 1 over v. However, in the case that we are able to do that, the whole ODE is almost solved. And maybe in order to see that, let's call minus f of x0 just c. So it's any constant here in this equation. Therefore, in our next step, let's put this constant to the right hand side. And then we see the solution we search for, alpha of t, is almost on the left hand side. In fact, we just have to find the inverse of f to isolate alpha of t. And there I can already tell you, this is always possible by our assumption around our value x0. In other words, locally we don't have a problem finding an inverse function of f. And in conclusion, that's all we need for solving our ODE. So on the right, we simply have f inverse of t minus our constant c. So in summary, we can say we find a solution of our ODE by doing that and then we simply have to adjust the constant such that our initial value is also satisfied. And with that we have it, this is the whole procedure of solving an autonomous ODE of first order. Now, of course the problem is, this looks very theoretical, so I want to show you two examples and how we can apply this procedure. And there we will also see that you don't have to memorize the procedure from above, you simply have to know what to do in the calculation. Now let's say we have the ODE x dot is equal to lambda times x with a positive lambda. And then for the initial condition we assume that x0 is not 0. Because in this case we can use our procedure from above. Okay, and at this point I want to show you an informal step that helps you to memorize the procedure from above. So we rewrite the derivative x dot as dx dt and then we informally multiply with dt. It seems strange, but it brings us to the correct form we have already justified above. So the idea is to bring everything with x to the left hand side and everything with t to the right hand side. In other words, we have lambda times dt on the right hand side now. And then we simply write an integral sign on both sides. Because then the separated dx and dt make sense again. 
And then you should see on the left, this is just a short notation for the antiderivative of one divided by v. Of course, not completely because the constant we already put to the other side. However, of course, this is not a problem because we already know on the right hand side, we just have t with a constant anyway. Okay, and now this equation says we have to write antiderivatives on the left hand side and on the right hand side. And the antiderivative of 1 divided by x is given by the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. And on the right hand side, we just have lambda times t as we already know it. However, please don't forget, before there was a constant involved because of the value of the antiderivative at x0. In fact, different antiderivatives only differ by an additive constant. This means we can just deal with that fact by adding a constant here in the equation. I call it capital C and the idea as before is that we find the correct constant such that our initial value is satisfied. So that's what you should see. It does not matter if we use this minus C here or this plus C here. It's all the same. We just have to find the correct constant in the end. And usually we just shift that problem to the end of the whole calculation. Okay, and then you already know in the next step we have to apply the inverse function of the natural logarithm here. And there you should know this is given by the exponential function. So we have e to the power lambda times t times e to the power of our constant c. And of course this x on the left hand side here should be now our solution alpha of t. So in order to make that clear, now we should also use this notation. And then you see, the only thing that remains is that we have an absolute value here, which means either we have plus the right hand side or minus the right hand side. And with these two cases, we have solved our initial value problem. So please note, E of something is always positive. So either we have a completely negative solution or a function that is always positive. And now by putting in t is equal to 0 to find our x0, we also get that this constant in front should be x0. In other words, the solution is then very short. It's simply x0 times exponential function of lambda t. Now, this whole thing here is a standard but also a very important example. And you see, now we have found all the solutions in this form. So for this example, we can also say something about the uniqueness of solutions. So this is already very good, but of course, in general, we will talk about this issue later. First here, I want to show you another example, namely x dot is equal to x squared. And as before, our initial condition is given as x zero not equal to zero. And now as we have learned before, we can do exactly the same steps as in the example above. Indeed, we already know this whole separation idea here gives us the correct form in the end. So on the left, we have dx divided by x squared. And on the right, we just have dt. And now as before, we write an integral to get antiderivatives into the game. So the antiderivative on the left hand side is just minus 1 divided by x. And on the right hand side, it's just t as always. However, as before, please don't forget to add the constant because this is needed to actually solve our initial value problem. Or to put it in other words, we want to find the general form of the solution and not just one particular solution. Therefore, please at this step, never forget the constant. Okay, and now as before, in order to make it consistent with our notation, let's use alpha t now instead of just x. And then in the next step, we just have to take the inverse here to get alpha t on the left hand side alone. Now this is not hard to see, our solution alpha of t is minus 1 divided by t plus c. So this is the general form of the solution and now we just have to find what the constant c is in order to satisfy our initial value. So this is no problem at all. We simply put in 0 into our form here. And then we see we have minus 1 divided by c. And now we know by our initial value problem that this should be equal to x0. Hence we have an equation that we can solve for c. And this is not a problem at all. c is simply given by minus 1 divided by x0. 
And that's exactly the thing we have to put into our general form here. And then indeed we can state the solution of our initial value problem here. So it's alpha of t is equal to minus 1 divided by t plus minus 1 divided by x0. And now of course we can simplify that by expanding the fraction. There we have x0 divided by 1 minus x0 times t. And there you see, this is the solution. We have solved our initial value problem. Okay, and with that we have seen some nice examples. And I would say in the next video, let's go deeper into the theory again. So I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.